Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome to Best Bites Forever. Today I am putting my own spin on a trend that is going around right now. Today I'm going to be making feta pasta with a Greek twist, so let's rock it out. Okay, so the first thing that I just now did is turn my oven onto 350 because we are going to be baking this. And here in this casserole, what I've done is buttered it really nicely and I have eight ounces of cream cheese already in there. So on top of that, this is where it's the feta pasta, I'm adding my block of feta and I also just happen to have some in the fridge that was hanging out and I'm like I might as well use it all you know so I'm gonna go ahead and put most of that maybe I'll save some for garnish put most of that into my pan the next thing that you do is you add in your pasta so oh it's loud in this case that would be one pound of elbow macaroni and I'm using this one. I'm going to go ahead and just give that a little spread like so. Next I'm adding my liquid and this is going to be six cups total which is one and a half quarts. I have four cups of two percent milk and two cups of heavy cream. So four cups of two percent and two cups of heavy cream. You can do whatever you want for liquid, like if you wanted to do four cups of heavy cream, two cups of water, or like four cups of half and half, two cups of milk, kind of do it how you want. This is going to be super creamy and wonderful with those two cups of cream, so this is what I'm going with. I also want to give this a nice pinch of salt from Salt Pig. What's up? Salt Pig the Pug. Salt Pig the Pug. I don't know, probably a teaspoon or so of salt because I'm adding some other salty things. So if I weren't adding in the things I am, I would go with more salt, just so we're clear. Probably two teaspoons, teaspoon and a half. Okay, so we're doing a teaspoon of salt in there, kosher salt. A little bit of black pepper. So here's where I'm going to give it my own little spin. I'm going to go ahead and set this over to the side for just a minute and grab a mixing bowl. So into my mixing bowl I'm adding some red onions and this is about, I don't know, a half of a cup-ish of red onions chopped up. There's about a half of a medium red onion. I'm also going to dice up a tomato. Doo, doo, doo. Pull those little seed parts out of there like that. And then you're just going to cut it into strips, turn it, cut it this way, so a little rough dice kind of. Alright, tomatoes going in. That's two Roma tomatoes cut up, diced without the seeds. I also have some fresh oregano here. And to put this in, you want to just kind of grab a hold of the stem and pull backwards like that. It pulls the leaves right off. You can chop those leaves if you want to, but I'm not going to worry about it. I'm just going to go ahead and put them in whole. Whoops, broke that one. I also have some olives, and these are Kalamata olives that I cut in half, probably about a quarter of a cup, along with a little bit of garlic, maybe two teaspoons or so minced. Ooh, it's looking pretty already, isn't it? It's going to go inside of our feta pasta. Here I have a jar of grilled artichokes, and you can use as much or as little as all of this that you want, but I'm going to drain this like so. That's quite a sound. I'm going to get those out the fork. I'm going to go ahead and run through these with my knife too. They're pretty good size. Onto the cutting board you go. Ooh, those look tasty, don't they? Uh-huh. I love artichokes. What's up, artichokes? Mm-hmm. Uh. Mmm. Those are good. Mm-mm-mm. Those are pretty tasty. These are gonna go into the bowl. Oven's ready. Perfect timing because we just gotta give this a little bit of a stir. That looks super crazy yummy. I could just like eat that as a salad, I think. So we are back to our lovely feta pasta dish here and I'm just going to go ahead and kind of spoon all of this beautiful goodness like around. Now the reason I did it in a separate bowl is because I wanted to make sure that it was mixed up because I don't want to do a lot of mixing once it's in there with the pasta because I don't want it to get all like gumpy, you know what I mean? 
I don't think that's a word. It's a word today, guys. All right, so little minimal stirring. So I'm almost folding here. I'm not done either. There's more to come once we get it out of the oven. All that's left to do is give it a little bit of a drizzle of olive oil. So this is going into the oven at 350 degrees Fahrenheit for about 30 minutes. When I take it out, I still have some more goodies to add that are going to really make it into a meal. So make sure that you stick around and I'll see you when it comes out of the oven. After I put that in the oven, I went ahead and I drained some frozen spinach and I had gotten this out right at the beginning so it had plenty of time to thaw. You want to use a paper towel and just squeeze it out to get the excess water out. I also chopped up some provolone. This is just over a cup and it's probably between a quarter and a half of a pound. So I'm going to take those things and mix them in with some chicken. And this is just leftover rotisserie chicken from the other night. It's a couple of cups, however much you want to put in there, but my casserole is already pretty full, so I'm not going to get too crazy. So here is my spinach going in. And all of this goodness is going to get stirred into that pasta when we take it out. One cup of Parmesan. Shredded or grated, doesn't really make a difference. I'm going to give this a nice little mix around and again this is just to make it easier to mix once I get it into the pasta. Over to the side and I'm going to pull the pasta. So here it is right out of the oven and I'm just going to take my spatula and kind of start mushing and mixing. So back into the oven for probably another 20 minutes or so. This is looking pretty darn delicious. So I'm going to give it a nice little stir. Just kind of get everything moving around a little bit. And then I'm going to add in those other ingredients. So here we have our chicken, spinach, parmesan, provolone, just to give it a little melty melty. Right? All going in there. <laughs> All right, stir it up. Just kind of folding it. All right, this is looking super delicious and as it sits the provolone is going to get nice and melty and like stringy and goodness so you can kind of see it already starting to happen do you see the yummy cheesy stringy goodness all right this is gorgeous i'm going to go ahead and plate it up i have a few garnishes here i have some tomatoes some chopped basil and a little bit more feta and you can use that as you like you could also garnish it with some olives or anything else that is in the dish is an appropriate garnish so go wild all right so i'm just going to give it a taste and see how it's going here before we plate up Ooh, look make sure to get everything in that bite mm. It is so creamy and just about the right amount of salt like when I got the olive it was perfect but before that I could have used just a tiny bit I don't know be careful with the salt it is absolutely fantastic though you guys you should definitely make this it is like creamy dreamy goodness dinner all in one casserole for you no wonder it's trending because it is yummy Oh, and by the way, this is what it looked like after I plated it. Ta -da! So that is it for now, guys. And hey, I will see you in the next video. Happy cooking, everyone. Backbiteforever.com. Uh, that was good. <laughs>